six or seven hundred military bases all over the world. Now the latest I heard is eleven hundred, and they're and they're growing. I mean, the the whole point of the uh, siege of Iraq was to put in those permanent military bases that surround the oil fields. I mean, if you look at a map of where our bases are, completely surrounds the Middle East. We we need to demand a complete withdrawal from the Middle East. We need to demand a. a Let's get let's get back here at home. Let's let's say that we don't succeed in in any uh, financial retractions from the military. We don't get to cut their budget. We don't get to withdraw bases. What do we do? Well, you don't have to just put a you know a horrible tax on any part of our society, even the rich that probably deserve to pay their fair share for a change. But uh, you ever hear of a Tobin tax? I heard of it from Webster Tarpley way back in 2007 or 2008. If we had followed it back then, we would, it would have been great. First, you reinstate the Glass-Steagall Act that separates the speculation from the, you know, regular savings banks or whatever you, I'm using the wrong terminology, but you separate the gambling from the uh, conservative investment bank. Uh, whatever. I, I'm, the point is, reinstate the Glass-Steagall Act and then institute a Tobin tax, which is like a, a one-third of one one-hundredth of a percent on every transaction that happens on Wall Street. Every single one. And there are billions and billions of transactions every month or every year. I don't know what the number is. But billions and billions, even just with a small fraction, adds up to a giant tax increase in our coffers without having to hurt anybody at all. And the traders would never notice it. And uh, I mean, they notice it when they see it sitting in a big lump in somebody's bank, like Social Security, even though they have no right to Social Security, that's, a, that's an insurance policy that we've paid for, invested in, and it runs itself. It, it's not an entitlement. And yet they think that that's up for grabs. And they're talking about, you know, taking back Social Security to pay back the trillions that they've reimbursed the banks. And, you know, yeah, you, you hear news reports about how the banks are not passing on the money. They're not re-loaning it to anybody. They're not making anybody's life easier. That's not what they're trying to do. They're just trying to harvest as much as they can before the collapse. And if we let them have another round, they'll take another round. All over the world, they're talking about bailing people out. but. That's not the answer. Let them crash. That's what the capitalist game is all about. If it isn't good enough to run on its own merit, let it die. So all those banks should have been going bankrupt. Now, you say, oh, that would lead to chaos. Well, what do you call 50 million people that don't have any hope of having any sort of retirement or insurance or anything? What do you, I mean, you know, in a, that's a, a tremendous number. We have the richest country in the world, but we only use it to enrich the top half of one quarter of one percent or whatever it is. You know, the, people talk about socialism as a bad thing. I don't care what ism you're talking about. Let's take what works from each ism there is. And l here's, here's a good point. If you saw somebody bleeding, lying in the street, and that's all you knew about it, didn't matter. You'd drop what you're doing and you'd rush over and try to help, wouldn't you? That's just your natural impulse. And if he was starving, you would go get food for him at your own expense. You'd do that. I'd do that. Anybody you know would do that, except the really mean, horrible people that don't even deserve to be considered. But the point is, that's human nature, to help somebody in distress. So. Why on earth, when we try to spread the cost, it's a burden to help. If, you know, if you're an individual and you run across a family that needs help, you're not in, empowered to help a family, unless you're really rich. But what if you spread it out over the whole society so that nobody takes an unbearable un, uh, burden? Yeah, it's socialism. Oh, how horrible. Get over it. 
you know, slap yourself in the face. You just admitted that socialism was okay on a personal level. You were perfectly willing to go give that person whatever they needed because it was the right thing to do. Well, if it's the right thing to do on an individual basis, by God, it's the right thing to do as a country. So let's drop this nonsense about, oh, we can't have socialism. Yes, we can. And let's start making sure everybody has a house. Let's make sure that education, as high as you want to go, is free. Absolutely free. They do it in other countries. Let's make sure that we have a single-payer health care program that has no profit in it. Health care, water, food, housing. To make those profit items and deny people housing and food and other necessities of life because they don't have enough green. And then you don't give them, the, you, don't, you set it up purposely so you cannot get that green. That's the, the bad part. You know, if you want to, they say in Russia, they ration health care. You have to wait to get a special service. Or in Canada, you have to wait. Well, here we ration it by money. And waiting doesn't get you any money. So wait all you want in this society. If you're rationed out because you don't have money, then you never get it. So the Canadians have one up on us. At least you get it there. So the point is, socialism is not a bad thing. It's just something that the elite don't want to talk about because it means they don't get to concentrate that much wealth in their coffers. And th that leads me to another thing. Nobody in a democracy, well, in this representative democracy like this where we supposedly have people representing us honestly and making laws, nobody in a country like that should be able to circumvent that process because they have money. And if it means taking away the money and bringing them down to our level, that's fine. If you can find another way to do it without taking their money, that's fine too. But they cannot use that money as political clout to, to kill other people because they can't buy food, or they can't buy shelter, or they can't stay warm in the winter, or they can't buy health care. So I'm mad at the Wall Street movement because they aren't saying any of this stuff. They're, they're, they're marching, we are the 99%. No, you're not. You're one quarter of 1% of the 99%. Most of the 99% sitting on their fat asses watching you do the work, and you're not doing the work right.